am back. It's good to be back. It is true. I had a baby. I had a few people ask me, did you really have a baby? You were gone for three months. Let me tell you something. Maternity leave is not a vacation. So please do not say that to women who have had a baby. Because if you think 3 a.m. feedings is a good time, you obviously have never fed a baby at 3 a.m. So it's good to be home. Um, <laughs> I have a great baby. I love Joshua so much. I just like look at other babies. I'm like, oh, I miss my baby. I don't know. It's a good time. Baby, thought, yeah. Motherhood's cool. And when you're married to the right man, it makes it even better. So <laughs> wait for that right person. I'm telling you. He, uh, he's super dad. I'd be like, oh. I don't know what to do. It's like, ah, let's just walk him around. So it's so funny. Uh, Pastor Tom was starting to, about blessing his people. And I just really felt in my spirit to read Psalm 34, just the first few verses. I know I'm throwing everybody off in the back, just over. It says, I will, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness and let us exalt his name together. I prayed to the Lord, he answered me and he freed me from all of my fears. Those who look to him for help will radiate with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. In desperation, I prayed and the Lord listened. He saved me from all of my troubles for the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. All the joys of those who take refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you, you his godly people. For those who fear him will have all they need. Even strong, young lions sometimes go hungry. But listen, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. This is, now listen, yeah. Let me tell you something. I'm already tired of hearing of COVID 2.0. So I'm speaking this over you right now. We have been saying to Joshua since he was in the womb and now that he's out, no fear in here in Jesus' name. So I need you to focus on other things and do not let the world scare you. And, I, and, I'm, and, and Deb May, she's real humble, but I'm gonna say it. Her devotional was so good. In fact, I went through and I added, if you, didn't, if you don't get our devotionals, please sign up for our devotionals. And if, you didn't, if, and if you need this particular one, like find me and I'll forward it to you. It gives a list of all godly um, outlets to listen to, like news-wise. Because you're not gonna get the truth in the world. I'm telling you. You can't get your news from Facebook. You can't get your news from the TikTok. Can't get your news on Snapchat, all the things. I'm just telling you, you need to hear godly, like, news. Because, one, we know Christ is coming back. He's coming back for his church. I'm so excited. Because now I got married and had a kid. He can come back now. <laughs> <laughs> like, I prayed all through youth group, please don't come back. Please don't come back. And now it's like, you're good. Come on back. But seriously, time on earth is so quick. Like we are, like it's fast paced. Things that took years to do, God, I believe is gonna move in such a fast way. So if God has put something on your heart, stop waiting around. Stop waiting around because there are people that you come in contact with every day who are going to hell and you're sitting there worrying about things that don't matter. It, it, I'm, it's like I, this isn't even my message. But I just need to tell you. And it just really just lit me up because God, there are people who need to hear your word. You guys are equipped. You're equipped saints that have a word for people. I need you to share. I need you to share. If God has placed someone in your heart, you pray for them and you speak life over them. You have the ability. You don't need some special degree. You have the Holy Ghost and that's the best thing ever. Okay, let's get to my message. <laughs> so tonight, I'm going to be preaching on Galatians 5. Um, when I was on my maternity vacation, I had a lot of time <laughs> to read the Word. And I'm going to get to it because God had to really work and, and um, help me uh, through. And those who are close to me know, um, and I'm going to share in a bit. But I, I want to read this. So I want to read Galatians 5 and mark this down. I need you to even take, the book of Galatians is just amazing anyways. But this chapter during my time home really resonated and spoke to my heart. So yeah, we're reading the whole chapter. So pull out your phones, pull out your Bibles. We're going to read the Bible today. I remember growing up in, uh, in church. 
I'm, I'm very competitive. I know, right? Shocker. I always made sure I brought my Bible because I was going to get a piece of candy and a sticker. So I have none of those for you tonight. Unless you have Pastor Tom, then he has a treasure chest. So there's that. So it says this, and freedom in Christ. So we're starting with verse one. So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in the slavery of the law. Listen, I, Paul, tell you this. If you are counting on circumcision to make you right with God, then Christ will be of no benefit to you. I'll say it again. If you are trying to find favor with God by being circumcised, you must obey every regulation in the whole law of Moses. For if you're trying to make yourselves right with God by keeping the law, you have been cut off from Christ. You have fallen away from God's grace. But we who live by the Spirit eagerly wait to receive by the faith, the righteousness God has promised to us. For we place our faith in Christ Jesus. There is no benefit in circumcised or being uncircumcised. What is important to faith, expressing itself in love. You are running your, way, your race so well. So who held you back from following the truth? It certainly isn't God, for he is the one who called you to freedom. This false teaching is a little yeast that spreads through the whole batch of dough. I'm trusting the Lord to keep you from believing false teachings. God will judge that person, whoever he is, who has been confusing you. Dear brothers and sisters, if I was still preaching that you must be circumcised, and some say I do, why am I, be, why am I still being persecuted? If we are no longer preaching salvation through the cross of Christ, no one would be offended. I just wish that those troublemakers who want to mutilate you by circumcision would mutilate themselves. That's really intense. For, for you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. You are called to live in freedom. Tonight, you will be set free. That is God's promise. You will not leave this church the same. I'm telling you, who the sun sets free is free indeed. And the freedom is the best. Let me tell you, taste and see that the Lord is good. I just read that in Psalm 34. But don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For the whole law can be summed up in one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you're always biting and devouring one another, watch out. Beware of destroying one another. Right here is what I really want to focus in. It says right here, verse 16. So I say, let Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just opposite what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the spirit, you are not under the obligation to the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual morality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and the other sins like that. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the Holy Spirit produces the kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no, no law against those. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to the cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not be conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. We are called to be spirit-led. What's the default setting in our mind? We automatically want to live like the flesh and let it control us. The flesh is loud and obnoxious. It may not seem like it, but you have control what controls you. You aren't meant to let your flesh rule your life. You're meant to walk in the spirit. You have victory and you're called to live in righteousness. That's what the word of God says. The spirit of God is in you right now. You might not feel it, but he is there speaking to you, directing you to freedom and blessing. That is God's promise to you. We saw that in Galatians. God wants you to operate in the realm of the spirit, not in this natural world, because that's how you live life. You've always dreamed. Let me tell you something. Walking in the spirit opens so many doors for you. Walking in the spirit. It's a transformation from one degree of glory to another, one move of obedience to another. We are called to live glory to glory to glory. 
That is God's promise for you. Walking in the Spirit has called us to step out and to trust God. Walking in the Spirit, when I was thinking about it, and then in my own life, as like I said, I was home uh, hanging out with our son and God just showed me some things and, and I'm just gonna break it down in the best way that I can. I had to go back into my journal and kind of understand my crazy handwriting because I write horribly like a kindergartner. Um, but yeah, but this is what God had showed me through this passage. And the first thing God showed me was when you're walking in the spirit, you're gonna start throwing off the hindrances that try to weigh you down. Hebrews 12, one says this, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, let us throw off everything, everything that hinders and, and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. There's nothing gentle about removing things in our life. That when he said, throw it off, there's nothing gentle about that. He's really, it's really aggressive. It says to don't sit around wondering if you should stop sinning or to cast that devil out of your life. He's saying, get rid of it. Anything that is stopping you from pursuing the heart of God, which Christ lives in you, get rid of it. And if it's tripping you up, get rid of it. So what is a hindrance? We see in Galatians, like I just read, that whole list, the sexual morality, impurity, lustful pleasures, jealousy, quarreling, all of that, that's a hindrance. Anything that is out of the line of the word of God is a hindrance. That's why Satan is so determined to strap you down with things that are not of God, like depression and anxiety and sickness, those things. That's a hindrance. That's not from God. You don't need to be sick. That's not even in your DNA at all. And I was just talking to someone who, um, they're, they're currently pregnant and they're like, yeah, we took the test to see, you know, if our baby might have Down syndrome. What does that matter? What does that matter? Your baby is made whole, perfectly perfect. That's across the board. Anything that you're facing, I'm fired up. I'm really sorry. Let me tell you something. When God, what God, and I'm just gonna share it right now. So, obviously, um, our sweet baby boy was born May 16th um, out of an emergency C-section. So, um, I was in active labor for a whole week. Everybody on staff, I think, hated me because I'm like, I'm in pain. <laughs> Give me snacks. I was just like a lot, a lot, a lot of pain. And so um, I had the best, like, best friends ever. Um, so May 14th, Mother's Day, they put me in. And um, so we're like setting up our room, all the things. Like um, we're on our iPads, playing farming and waiting for this baby to show up. I, did, I thought he came right away. Well, I don't, <laughs> new surprise. Um, and so they started inducing me and... Um, Nothing's happening, obviously. And then the 15th comes on Monday. I'm like, where's this baby? Where is this baby at? And um, they're like, they try different things, different mechanisms and all that good stuff. And it was probably after, it's probably like one or two o'clock in the morning. You're like, all right, let's, let's put up that Pitocin. And I was like, What's, what in the world? First of all, I passed out during the epidural. They don't tell you, I didn't know that you can do that. Um, I thought I saw the Lord. Um, that's, it wasn't true. It was the side of the bed. Um, <laughs> so they're like, okay, what's next? Um, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, we're gonna, we're gonna pump that Pitocin up to get your, your dilation moving. Cause I went from one to six in like a, a lot of hours. Um, and so they're putting the Pitocin up and every time they would jack that Pitocin up, Joshua's heart would drop. And they didn't tell us this. Mind you, they have you rolling around like rotisserie chicken and I'm trying to like, <laughs> what's going on? Where's our baby? And then it was like 6 a.m. And uh, it was like maybe 6, 6.30 in the morning on the 16th. And they're like, the, the PA comes in. She's like, yeah, the doctor's gonna come in and we're gonna talk about a C-section. I was like, they're like, yeah, we are gonna have to do it. I look at Aaron, I'm like, we're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> Get this baby out. <laughs> So the doctor comes in, gives Aaron his like medical kit and by medical kit, pants, t-shirt and the things that go on the foot. I thought my husband got a million dollars the way he was so excited. Um, he's a huge fan of medical stuff. It was a good time. And so we go, I promise there's a, there's a story to this. I just give you the background. We go, emergency section, 
lifts them up like the Lion King. I don't remember anything. I just remember like, oh my gosh, my baby has really big lips. And then I look at Aaron and he's like, I'm gonna buy you a car. I'm like, me? He's like, no, the baby. I'm like, oh. And so, <laughs> and so, <laughs> so we do all the things and they bring him over. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Because mind you, Joshua, our sweet baby boy, did not show his face the whole time. Like we had no idea what he looked like. We didn't even have a name. So there's that. Um, and so we celebrate, woo, emergency C-section. Ah, so they, I go home and... Um, you're supposed to recover, so I'm recovering, and, um, but something was wrong. Uh, so I was kind of like, the, I, would go, I went to the doctor the following week, and like, ah, oh, that doesn't, your, your incision doesn't look right. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? <laughs> like, my first, my first, my flesh wants to go fear. I'm like, oh my gosh, is like my insides gonna fall out? This is what I'm thinking. Like, and if you know me, you know I'm a little traumatic. Um, so I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what's gonna happen? And they're like, we're gonna give you medication because um, there seems to be an infection in there. I'm like, infection, oh my goodness, okay, that's cool. So it, let, let me give you the heads up. It started off with two infections. By the time I had another surgery, there was, um, I think it was close to 10 or 12. It was, it was just drastic. So I go, I take the medicine, and I go in the following the next week, and they're like, it's not better. We gotta go in and cut you open again. And I remember the night before the sur- like the night before my doctor's appointment, because I'm going in Monday night, I remember pacing with Joshua and trying to get him to sleep. And I just remember singing, I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to the Lord. And I'm I'm singing it, and I'm like, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. And I'm, I'm telling you, because in the moment when they're like, we're gonna go in and cut you open again, I did not see the good. Not at all. I didn't see the good. I didn't see how this was gonna be. <laughs> and it makes me cry because I'm like, Lord, we just came out of this beautiful moment um, with our, the birth of our son. And my husband, I'm telling you, man, Side note, ladies, wait for the man who will see you in the ugliest of ugly. Um, We spent more time in the hospital in the beginning of Joshua's life than anything. And we go in for the surgery. And mind you, like, we're like, what are we going to do with our baby? Um, He just knows me. Um, He doesn't take a bottle. How are we going to do this? And let me tell you, that baby slept through the whole surgery. But let me lead you. Let me tell you why this is important. Leading up, like in, as I'm in the metal, and as I'm in the room, they're preparing me. I had Christian upon Christian upon Christian coming in, who were nurses and doctors who spoke blessing over me, and my husband and I were able to speak into them. So, side note: if you are in the field, whether it's it's in medical field, business, whatever, you're important. You're 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 so important. In fact, it's so funny because I'm getting ready to go into the, they're coming in to, to will me out to the surgery and Michelle Smoka, who is here, uh, she was the one who willed me to my surgery. And so she was able to bring peace to me when I'm starting to feel overwhelmed. And then I get to the actual, where they're about to take me into the next part of the surgery and there was another Christian, another family um, that they go here and they, she spoke over me. So we have the surgery this is what happens. You're like, you're on bed rest. So not only did it change from maternity, maternity to medical. So they go in, mind you, they gave me a a lot of medication. One time, the one medication that they tried to give me before the surgery actually paralyzed me from the hips down. I couldn't move. And so I'm laying in bed and I'm praying in tongues. And I'm just like, and this is why it's important. We're going to get to it. Why you need your prayer language. Like you need to have it because when you don't know what to pray, you're interceding. The Holy Spirit's coming through. Like, you need your prayer language. And if you don't have it, you're getting it tonight. Telling you right now. So we get home, surgery's done, this, that, and the other. Um, And they're like, okay, we're going to have a home nurse come in. A home nurse? I felt like I was old. Because I thought, like, only really super old people got in home nurses. I didn't know, like, (laughs) like, I didn't know. It said three days a week, this woman's coming in. Let me tell you something. Every time she stepped into our house, there was worship or messages playing. 
And by the time that we, by the time she finished up with us, we we're able to pray with her and lay hands on her and watch her be healed. Yeah. So let, let's get back to, so we get the surgery and I'm, I'm at home and I'm resting. And the Lord just started digging in some deep parts of my heart. And this is where this message came from. When I thought that I, my, my first reaction is to go straight flesh during this whole situation, I had to train my brain to not go there. In fact, not only whenever you have a baby, they say, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. I rebuked everything that they said. They said, you're going to get postpartum. I had one incident, and I was so clear. I'm sitting in our bedroom holding Joshua, and I'm starting to cry. And Aaron comes up, and he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, I don't know. That man cast whatever was trying to, like, come on me in the name of Jesus. I went through three months, still going strong. I've had no postpartum depression. It can be done. <laughs> Let me, it's not even postpartum. It's depression. You don't own or need or hold on to that depression. If, if you're using it as a crutch, that's you. The Lord has set you free. He has a plan for your life. Hopefully PT didn't drink out of this. I'm real thirsty now. <laughs> Anything that's out of the word of God is a hindrance. I could have been in straight fear during this whole situation, but God said, no, watch what I do. I spent three months, in a sense, locked in my house, working from home, and hearing messages upon messages, worship upon worship. And you're thinking, why well, can't just sit around? Yes, you can. You can, put, and you can put your music in, you can put messages in, and hear what the Word of God is saying. Because I didn't let anything come in. In fact, I think only eight people knew what was going on in my life. Because you have to watch people who try to creep in because they're going to try to bring doubt, and then you got to push them over. People can be hindrances. Pete, I didn't tell nobody. When I say I tell them, nobody knew what was going on except my close circle. Because I had to have, I needed people to be like, yo, I'm really struggling. I'm really, str and they'd be like, no, you're not. I'm real, no, no, you're not. Let me tell you something. Those people came and they held my arms up and I was able to focus on what God was about to do. I had so much freedom. In fact, I, I, I literally want to be like, woo, everywhere. I know, right? Woo! <laughs> when you keep your eyes on Jesus, there's no hindrances that can touch you. To get rid of those things that are slowing you down, you need to walk in the spirit. The natural world has become so small in your heart and mind that they don't even bother you. It's not that I don't care about things. I just don't care about it. Like, I don't get worked up. Like, when the news is dropping this and this and this, and the doctor's like, you got this, this, and this. I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> well, you have, no, I, I don't. No, I don't. And people are going to think you're weird. Don't care. You have to get to the point where your flesh is constantly being crucified and you're letting your spirit man go after the things of God. Walking in the spirit. This, didn't, this transformation in my mind didn't happen overnight. I had, to, I had to keep going at it every day. I had to wake up every day and I had to get in the word. Every day I'm in the word asking Holy Spirit, what do you want to do today, Holy Spirit? Just like every morning I sing to Joshua, this is the day, and he's kicking and we're having a good time. I'm like, Joshua, Aaron, what do you want to do today? And he just stares at me. And I'm like, I want to punch Satan in the face. And he just stares at me. And we punch Satan in the face. That's what we do. You don't have to live defeated you have the victorious life. Everything you put your hand to will prosper. In fact, I declare the next four months is going to be the best four months in your entire life that you don't even know what to do with all the blessings that are about to come down on you in the name of Jesus. That's what happens when you walk in the Spirit. You're going to be so in tune with what Holy Spirit is saying. You're going to know what's next for your businesses. I declare that right now. What's next for your business? What's the right direction to go in? 
I declare even your marriages are going to be restored. You think your marriage is done? We don't know what we're doing. No. In the name of Jesus, your, your marriages are going to be better than ever. And if you have a heart to get married, I declare by the end of this, you're going to meet the person you're supposed to marry in the name of Jesus. And if you're, de if you're determined to get pregnant, I declare that you're going to get pregnant. Use your words because God's promise needs to flow from you. Let his promises flow from you. Walking in the spirit comes from spending time with the Holy Spirit. There's no other way. Like you can't plug into someone like, give me what you have. You can, yeah, who you hang out with definitely affects what's going on. But I'm telling when you, when you're in the word, it's just gonna, it's just gonna wash over you. It would have been so easy to hop into depression or fear or worry. I didn't allow myself to go there because I knew what God said. I already know because I spend time in the Word. I know what Holy Spirit says. I know what He says about me. When you say yes to God, you say goodbye to the old way of thinking and living. I don't think like I used to. Like, ever. I don't allow myself to go back there because it'd be easy to. It'd be easy to just get mad at people. Like this whole few weeks of watching the beta Satan, like being offended. It'd be easy to get offended. But for me, I don't know if it's rude, but I don't care that much to get offended. You can offend me. You can't offend me because, you know, this is what I train myself to think. I don't get offended because it's a spiritual battle. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but darkness. And so I always ask myself, Holy Spirit, what's really going on? And let me tell you something. He's going to tell you. He's going to tell you and he's going to give you the words to speak over that person or whatever is going on. There are times that you need to say no out loud when it comes to the things that displease the Father. Even if you shout it if you have to, no, I do not receive that. I cast on every high imagination that tries to exalt itself against God. Every day, if you have to do that, nope, I rebuke you. Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. I would say that. Like before we even go into the doctor's appointment, I'm like, in the name of Jesus, anything that is not of the word, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. And I would go to the appointment and they would tell me, I'm like, okay. And then I would move on. Who am I going to believe? Am I going to believe man or am I going to believe God? I'm going to believe God. Because I've already seen his promises come to pass over and over and over again. I'm telling you, like, <clears throat> if you're going to see my spirit, man, I feel like I can, like, be like the Kool-Aid man and kick a wall down. I just feel like just this revelation that God has given me. Sickness is a hindrance. And let me tell you something. It's part of... Um, the home nurse thing. Um, I had this really sweet bag I had to carry. It was a wound vac. We called it Betty. <laughs> so if you didn't, like when you have an emergency, whatever, if your car accident, whatever, and they have to like get the infection out, whatever, they like stick you with some stuff and then you get like this bag that you wear to your side. It's like this big, it's like five pounds. I think I've tripped over it. I pulled it off the couch. It's like a couple of G's. I'm like, Lord, I need you to deal with this. And every day I'd wake up, because at night I had to be plugged in. <laughs> like I was like a, like an Evo car. <laughs> I was like an electric car. I was like, wait, I gotta get plugged in. <laughs> and, I was like, and I'd plug myself in and I would just lay in bed and pray in the spirit. And I'm like, in the name of Jesus, you will not be here. You will close up wound right now in Jesus' name. So, um, Betty, she came everywhere with us, obviously, because she was attached to me. Um, in fact, the fir after the first three weeks after I had the emergency surgery um, to get the infection out, I wasn't allowed to carry Joshua down the stairs, long distances. Um, I had to wait. I was literally like, <laughs> I was kind of stuck in my room upstairs. I was stuck in our bedroom. I actually kept snacks because my mom had to come over and, and get me. Like, it was just like, I was like, wait there. I'm like, oh, like by day four, I was like, I should keep like food up here. And so I did. And so <laughs> like, I was like, I'm starving. Um, and so, uh, you know, Betty would come with me and, and when they put the wound back on, they're like, yeah, you know, Sheena, this will take about eight weeks of it being on. I said, in the name of Jesus, it's not gonna be on for eight weeks. And the home nurse was like, 
okay. Like she's like, girl, this girl's crazy. So every day, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Katie the nurse would show up. I'm like, yo, what's up? How's everything? We'd have a little chit chat. And she's like, all right, let's check it out. She's like, the first time, yo, let me tell you something. I had a 20 centimeter incision on my body. It went from 20 centimeters to 16 centimeters in like four days. That's not normal. But Jesus is not normal. Let me tell you something. Those four centimeters closing spoke to Katie because she started seeing Holy Spirit move in my life. And so I'm like, how are we doing, Katie? How's it looking? Is it getting smaller? And every time, yeah, it's actually getting smaller. And she was shocked. Uh, and I would tell her, like, I'm gonna tell you, it's the Holy Spirit. The Lord is healing my body. And she's like, okay. And so, like, and so I'm like, she's like, yeah. I'm like, is it small? Like, is, it's getting smaller right now. I would just ask her every time because she would measure it. So that's the first week. And I'm like, so do you think, I'm, I asked her, do you think it's really gonna take eight weeks? She's like, oh yeah, it's gonna take like eight weeks. It took three and a half weeks before this thing was taken off of me, that wound back. <laughs> now the wound is barely there because every day I would curse that wound and I still do. There's no side effects from all the medication that they placed me on. They made me take medicine. And so I was like, if this is what we gotta do, watch what Jesus does. Our baby wasn't affected at all. There was no side effects, none of that stuff. But something that took eight weeks, God moved it up so fast to three and a half weeks, even I was blown. I was blown away. I was like, are you kidding me? She's like, yeah, we're gonna take this off. I was like, yes. I can hold my baby normally. <laughs> Cause I, even my first week home, I had a, I had an arm pick in. Like I had to like, Aaron had to like give me IV. Like it was a mess. But the whole time when we were doing all this stuff for the medical things, we would pray in the spirit. I was not gonna allow the enemy to trip me up and to rob my joy in this season of having a new baby. Having listed the works of the flesh, listen, Paul pointed out that people who practice these things will not enter the kingdom of God. That all that flesh stuff, all that flesh stuff is gonna hinder you from moving forth in what God wants to do in your life. You cannot settle for second best. God has the best plan for you. He wants to give you everything. He prom everything that he's promised, he has for you. There's no such thing as a victorious Christian living without a moment by moment, hour by hour, day by day dependence upon the Spirit of God. And we say that in our house. We say moment by moment, this whole season that we are going through, moment by moment, we are trusting the Lord. We are trusting God. He who sows to the Spirit, will the Spirit reap everlasting life? And that's Galatians. Let me tell you something. The book of Galatians is amazing. If you're gonna walk in the Spirit, you can't sow your time to the world. Stop giving your time to the world, following after things that aren't godly. You've got to sow to the Spirit to reap the harvest of the blessed and the abundant life, lacking nothing. Every day, my, my day starts off around 6, 6.30 before Joshua wakes up because I, I desire to dive into the Word so I can hear what's going on. Many Christians don't grow because they don't get the Word into themselves. If you don't give God time, natural voices will overwhelm his spirit in your life. If you're hearing the world more than you're hearing God, that's an issue. I'm telling you, when you live that God life, it's totally different, man. Totally different. Faith comes from hearing the word of God. Even if you have to listen to the word in your AirPods or whatever you do daily, literally just soak yourself in it. I love, um, and actually I got it from, and Pastor Tom mentioned Bill Johnson on Sunday, one of my favorite people. Bill Johnson said he never left the gospels until he started walking that out of how Jesus lived. If you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, three chapters a day, you can get through that whole gospel in 30 days. I did that for one straight year and it changed my life so drastically to where it's like, if Jesus can do it, I can do it. Jesus did it, I'm doing it. If, if he laid hands, I'm laying hands. If he healed the sick, I'm healing the sick. You only do what you see your father do. 
And that comes from spending time with him. Sure, you could do things in the natural, but they shouldn't take up all your time. Give your spirit the opportunity to feed on the word of God. Fellowship with him. Build yourself up in faith. The more you're in the word, the more when people try to speak things into your life, you just push it out of the way. Like that's not, a, that's not the word. In fact, when someone tries to tell you something, it's actually uncomfortable. When you hear something that's not good, it's actually very uncomfortable. And will you lose friends? Yes, so what? <laughs> and? Let me tell you, when you sow to the spirit, it will take you to a realm where you've never been before. Kenneth Hagin once prophesied the importance of giving the Lord a tithe of your time, just an hour or two. You might say, I don't have an hour, but the truth is you'll make time for anything that is important enough. Give your time to the Lord. You give your tithe, tithe your time to the Lord. And it's the best decision I've ever made during my time home. I determined in my heart, I was like, well, I got six weeks from maternity leave. I mean, it turned out a little bit longer. Sorry, PT and Deb. Um, <laughs> but during those three months, I was able to feed on the word, listen to our messages, listen to messages from other pastors, listening to worship. It was a game changer, it was a life changer. If you're spending more time watching messages and listening to others, how will you know what the word says to you? Get into the word as well. It's great to listen to pastors. I love it. But you need to read this for yourself. You need to get in the word for yourself. If you're like, where do I start? I'm telling you. Grab our devotionals that are sent out in an email. Go on version. Go to the bookstore. I'm telling you. It's a game changer. And I keep saying that because my life has been transformed so drastically in the last three months. Like I was, I'm in super in love with Jesus. Like I don't care. We've, uh, and one thing that we do, we always make sure that when we go out, we ask Holy Spirit what you're doing. What are you doing, Jesus? And we just start ministering. And like I said in the beginning, we're in the last days. I'm ready for the Lord to return. But I want to make sure that we're taking people with, with us. <laughs> one thing I always kept in my journal, actually it kind of sounds kind of weird, but it really isn't. Pastor Tom said years ago, our job is to rob hell and to expand heaven. And that has stuck in my heart for years. And my only job is to lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. That's what we pray over Joshua every night. We say that he is the head, not the tail. And he will never get sick. In fact, the only time he will ever visit a hospital is if he's to go lay hands on someone and watch them get recovered. Amen. Same with you. I speak that right now in the name of Jesus. The only time next time you go to the hospital is to lay hands on someone and watch them recover. We, can, we need to make that normal. We need to make that normal. If you see something going on, that you're laying hands and seeing people healed. Amen. Amen. That's normal. We don't look like the world. I don't chase after the world because I don't care. If, I don't want to live like that. I used to live like that. I used to live off of both sides of my mouth. They're like, Jesus, and over here act reckless. And that was through Bible school. I know. I'm a church kid. But something happened to me years ago where something clicked. And I'm like, no, I want Jesus. I want more of you. God has called you to live a set-apart life, being and living a holy life. You are a living sacrifice. You are a living sacrifice. And there are some people in here, and I don't know who it is, but there is some repenting that needs to happen. You need, when you repent, you're turning away from your formal things, your former things. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. What are you doing? What are you doing? God loves you so much. He desires for you to live in righteousness and holiness. And when you get in the word, you desire that same thing. The things I used to do, I don't want to do because I want to be more like Christ for the sake of others. Everywhere I go, everywhere I go, I want people to see Jesus. Everywhere I go, if I see a need, I'm going to meet that need. I don't have needs. I meet needs. That's God's word. That's his promise. 
Present your body a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you'll prove that which is good and perfect will of God. So how do we present our body as that? Lay aside the things of the world. This means be willing to give up activities, habits, friends don't match, that doesn't match God's best for you. Walking away from things that are not pleasing. I guarantee there are things in your life that are not pleasing God and you like it and I want to challenge you to let go of it. It could be pleasing as in for yourself, like you like to sit in your sickness. You like to sit in your sin. You think it's okay to live recklessly. Oh, sex is not really a big deal. I'm going to go there. In fact, if you're living with someone who's not your spouse and you play in house, that's a sin. If you want God to elevate you to the next season of your life, I need you to repent and I need you to turn away. I feel like there's a church as a whole. I'm not saying us. I'm saying church as a whole. We don't want to preach repentance because it's offensive. Let me tell you something. Without repentance, there's, you don't see God's grace and goodness. I'm so glad and I'm so happy that God saw me even at my worst that he would take me in and love me. I was in addictions and depression and anxiety and God still called me by name and pulled me out. He's doing the same for you. You don't have to live in that lifestyle anymore. In fact, if you're struggling with the lifestyle, I'm going to call it out. If you're struggling with homosexual thoughts, God has set you free tonight. If you're thinking about leaving your spouse and getting divorced, I rebuke that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. You have been set free. God wants you whole. He's paid for it. It's God's will for you to be whole. It's, your, it's God's will for you to be healed. That's why he came. Obey righteousness and not the flesh. The reason people get so good at sin is because they practice it. Quit practicing your sin. For example, a person doesn't become an alcoholic the first time he takes a drink. He had to practice drinking until the flesh was trained to demand it. To become good at obeying the Holy Spirit, you have to do the same. It's repetitive. It's repetitive. I know I go back to the same story. I remember I, had a, I have a bucket list. I think bucket lists are cool. I like lists. In fact, I'm that person that gets excited when the new planners come out. And I remember on my bucket list, I'm like, I'm going to run a 5K. That's like my goal. So every day I'd wake up and I would train. I mean, halfway through the 5K, I wanted the Lord to return. He did not. <laughs> but I trained it. I was able to run that 5K and complete it. That is the same with your walk. At the end of your life, are you going to stand before God and is he going to say, well done, good and faithful servant? Is that, is that what he's going to say to you? Or is he going to say, get away, I don't even know you. I paraphrase that. I want him to be like, Sheena, you are my girl. You did it. I'm like, yes, I did. And I'm going to go to my mansion and I'm going to worship the king. I want that from you. So if you don't have a relationship with Christ tonight, we're going to change that. We're going to see you get to heaven with the rest of us. Because you're not leaving this room if you don't have a relationship with Christ. I'm telling you, it is a game changer. It changed my world. I grew up in the church, but I didn't make Jesus my own until I was 13. And I wasn't set free from addictions until I was 21. And they were hidden because I was full of shame. But when you come before the Father, there's no shame. There's no shame in Christ because he doesn't even see it. You're a new creation in Christ. The old man has passed. In fact, if someone's trying to post generational curses on you, I rebuke that too. You don't have generational curses. That's not you because you're a new creation in Christ. That's not you. What happened to your parents is not going to happen to you. What happened to you as a child, that's not going to happen to your kids. Now I'm fired up. I should have worn my hoop so I could rip them off. I'm telling you, God is so good. He has a plan for your life and it's good. And it's not for evil. It's good and not for evil. Make the daily decision to kill your flesh daily. 
If it's not of God, don't even entertain it. No, not doing it. But what? Nope, I'm not getting involved with that. And sometimes you gotta be like, and walk away. As you continue to present yourself to the Lord, it may take some time for things to straighten out. But if you're willing to be obedient, it's just gonna keep moving so quick. As we obey Holy Spirit's leading first, the other things in our life will start straightening out. I remember when I was 13, and I was like, I like gave myself to the Lord. I'm like, Jesus, I love you. I will go anywhere. I will even go to China and burn alive. Like that was what I, everyone was like, what do you wanna be when you grow up? I wanted to be dead for Jesus. Like I wanted them to take my body to the middle of like a square and catch me on fire in China. I, I read Voice of the Martyrs and listened to Toby Mac, so I blame him. And so, <laughs> but the moment that I really came alive, it's almost like, my spirit man was like, Bah! And when that happened, I knew that I didn't want anything else but Jesus. I pray right now, if you feel like you're in that spot where you're like, I don't even know why I'm living. I don't even know what I'm doing with my life. I want you to know that you're not leaving tonight the same. I don't care if we gotta stay here and lay hands on every one of you I'm already ready. These are my comfy shoes. I wear comfy shoes because I want to see you set free. You cannot do this life without Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, if I see one more news of the E57.25 COVID coming through for the second variant round, we ain't doing it again. We ain't doing it again. No. I couldn't talk loud with a mask on when I wore it like three times. I can't breathe. I'm a, I'm a mouth breather. It was a lot of work. Romans 8, 26 says, and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with the groanings that cannot be expressed in words. The most powerful way to begin walking in the Spirit is start praying in the Spirit. This is where I need you to get your prayer language. I declare by the end of this year, VT said, I think it was like 90 something, 90, we're going to bring it to 100. In fact, every time we get together, it's going to be sounding like a tongue of choirs. That's what we're doing. And let me, ta- let me I'm going to challenge you to this. I remember I got my prayer language when I was 16. I remember being in church. I'm like, Jesus, like, I love you. And some guy was like, in the name of Jesus. I went to a very Pentecostal church, flew back. It was wild. And ever since then, I was like praying in tongues. And so, um, uh, so I got to shout out again. I'm so sorry, Deb May. Deb May, I went to her one day. I was like, how do you pray in tongues so long? Because I get like 30 seconds in and I'm like, let's wrap this up. I'm like, I'm hungry. Lord, you could talk to me on my way to Duncan. Like, have your way, Jesus. Thank you, Father. And she said, start by like a minute and then three minutes and then five minutes. I challenge you, if you are like, how in the world do you pray long? Start with a minute, then three minutes. And now we be praying in tongues all the time. I think Joshua might speak in tongues before he says a word. Because I'll be laying hands on him and stuff. I'm like, in the name of Jesus. And I start praying and he's like stares at us. And I'm saying that because let me tell you, there is power when you pray in tongues. Holy Spirit is always speaking to you. There's always an answer to every problem you're facing. Holy Spirit whether it's your finances, whether it's your health, your family, the worst issue in your marriage, only one word from the Lord away. You're one word away from the, like, he can just change it. He'll give you one word. It's a changer. We are called to harass the enemy, not the other way around. Every day you wake up and you say, I'm gonna throat punch the enemy. It's a good time. Because anytime things try to go my way, I'm like, and I just keep walking. I'm like, Jesus. And then like something will come there, like that's not from the Lord. Or if someone tries to say something, like get behind me, Satan. Everything God tells you to do is important. So you need to tune in. When he says that we are the righteousness of God in Christ, that we're already healed by his stripes, you can't get any more healed. Like he's paid it all. Like you can't beg for it. It's like going to your birthday party and not taking any of the gifts. That's dumb. So that's dumb. You don't take your healing. You need to 
Faith comes by hearing the word of God. So the more you're listening to the word, you're building your spirit man up. Your faith is growing. The whole idea is build your faith up. No one wants us to just, no one wants us, he wants us to just believe it and release that righteousness and healing. No questions, no doubts, no wavering. Like children, we must trust that he means what he says. What he says, he will do. There's no doubt. I'm telling you right now, after seeing Holy Spirit, after seeing the blood of Jesus heal my wound at such a fast pace, you can't tell me nothing. Eight weeks? No, try. And you know what? It would have been three weeks, but the nurse went on vacation and she couldn't take off Betty the wound vac. So I had to slug it around everywhere. Lug it, slug it. Either way. I'm telling you, you are healed, made whole, nothing missing, lacking, or broken. You are perfectly perfect. You have the mind of Christ. You are the head and not the tail. You have favor wherever you go. Not only do you have favor with God, you have favor with man. Whew. <clears throat> Confess this every day. I hear the voice of the shepherd and strangers' voices I will not follow. I will not follow strangers. You need to stop following the enemy when God has already told you what to do. When you obey the promptings of the Holy Spirit, you will be in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing with the right people. He wants to use you and you will have success and victory in everything you do. He has called you to minister to those in need. We should not be satisfied with the status quo. We need to rise up and declare, I'm born again by the blood of Jesus. I've been baptized. I speak in tongues and I have the power of God in my life. Every day, you are the head and not the tail. God wants us to stand in the gap for this generation. And you have a bunch of kids hanging out outside and it's awesome. We need to be covering those kids because a lot of them are starting school tomorrow if they haven't started already. We need to be covering them because there's a lot of stuff out there. And if you have kids in school, we're gonna pray for them, we're gonna cover them. And I just speak, right, I speak that right now in the name of Jesus. I speak a hedge of protection over every student going back to school. Every teacher, everybody on staff, they are covered in the name of Jesus. Nothing will touch them. No attacks, nothing in the name of Jesus. We need to be loving and pouring into this generation because the enemy, not only does he want to destroy families, he wants to kill our children. He wants to kill our children and he's using people every day to try to do so. No, we're not having it. We're not doing it. And it made me think when I was reading this and getting in, in I'm gonna wrap it up. When was the last time you laid hands on someone and prayed for their healing? This is not something that only pastors get to do. It's the great commission that was given to every believer. Mark 16, 18 says, and when any believer lays hands on someone who is sick, that person shall recover. Not might recover, but they shall recover. We are here for such a time, and this is our time to preach the gospel to every person we come in contact with. We cannot, we cannot be satisfied and think that the gospel is powerless. We must know that as a church, as people, we must fall on our faces before God, get and filled up and go out and preach this, this generation. So tonight, it is really heavy on my heart. And I know that we're at 8.30, and I know some of you have kids, but if you want prayer tonight, we have elders and pastors that are sitting up here and we're gonna pray for you because I don't wanna see you go home the same. If you have needs, physical needs, we're gonna lay hands and you're healed. In fact, if you wanna accept Christ tonight, we're gonna lead you through that too. So I'm gonna pray over you and, before, and, and as pastor dismisses, I want you to come to the front if you, if you have prayer, if you have needs, because I'm not leaving till everyone gets prayer. I don't care if I, if I gotta wait and, and just sit and talk to you. We're gonna get through this because you are a force to be reckoned with. The enemy hates you. He wishes you were dead years ago. 
He wants you to stay in that depression and that anxiety. And right now, in the name of Jesus, if you're thinking of suicidal thoughts, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. You are important, and God calls you by name. God calls you by name. Also, if you have any addiction to any drugs, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus too. You've been set free. So Father, I cover your people right now in Jesus' name. I thank you that by your stripes, they are healed. It's been done, a done deal finished. So Father, it is your will that they walk in that healing. Childhood trauma that anyone's dealt with, we rebuke that and we declare healing over your mind right now in Jesus' name. You don't have to stay in that trauma. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old man has passed. So Father, we thank you for what you're about to do. We thank you for the lies. We thank you for the souls that are about to enter into heaven, Father God. And we thank you. We thank you for those who are gonna accept Christ. We thank you for those who are gonna walk out differently. So Father, we love you and we worship you and we thank you. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you again for joining us. We pray that you were blessed and encouraged by our service. We invite you to join us again next week. Our services go live every Sunday at 9 a.m. on Facebook, YouTube, and at wordoflife.church. And we also meet in person every Sunday at 9 and 11 a.m. If God is using our church to change your life and you'd like to help us lead people to life in Jesus through your generous giving, you can do so by visiting wordoflife.church give, or you can text your donation amount to 84321. Follow along with us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube if you'd like to know more about what God is doing in and through Word of Life Church. God is doing incredible things here, and we are so honored that you chose to spend your time with us.